Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Rex for here, and welcome back to another gaming tutorial. And today, what we're going to be doing is going over some precise platform collision slash movement. Jeez, I cannot get that out for the life of me, but nonetheless, uh, we have this little player here, and he can move to the left and the right, and he can jump up, and he comes down by gravity. And we have a little gap here, and usually, it's a little complicated for some people to actually make it so their player or object can actually go directly down a gap like this. And what we're going to be doing today is making it so they can. So so if we move directly over this gap, or actually just jump into this gap for, let's see if I can, yeah, get in the gap, there we go, we can just jump right down, no problem, we can jump up, and we can also horizontally go down the same size gap, and all that kind of fun stuff, and go inside other gaps, and cool stuff like that, so one thing I really want to mention as well, is if we press F4 to kind of full screen this, um, you'll notice that the collision between our player and the little collision object here, which that's what these red things are as well, just little collision objects, and then behind them are uh, various tiles, but... Um, there pretty much is a pixel perfect collision going on there, so that's what we're going to be learning today guys And let's get out of that full screen mode and exit this out and head into Game Maker and see how this is all possible So first of all um, both of our sprites we have an SBR underscore player and SBR underscore collision uh, They're both 16 by 16 and there's nothing special going on um, in or excuse me within them uh, So you really it, you know, it doesn't matter what you do to these um, what dimensions they are whatnot um, the main thing that you need to make sure of is whatever uh, we do in their objects. So, you know, the sprites for, as far as the sprites go, they don't really do anything, so... <laughs> Anyway, forgive my speech today, guys. She's just terrible today. I don't know what's going on. Um, and for these backgrounds, um, all these backgrounds, it's pretty self-explanatory, but they're just basically the um, tile sets here. And I'll show you guys actually how to get rid of these, uh, the, the red collision blocks showing up as well. So it just looks like we have the tiles. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and head over to our objects and see how this is all uh, workable. So head into our OBJ underscore player object first. And also, I'm going to be putting a link to the uh, example right here that I made in the description below. So you guys can go ahead and download that if you want to. Maybe reference the two and, you know, if maybe you have something going wrong or you just want to download it for the heck of it. Um, but what we have going on in our player is just some simple gravity. And going on the step event here, and I'll just show this off really briefly. And our collision with our OBJ underscore collision object, and basically what this is, is in the move tab, we have a, uh, uh, whatever this is called in D&D, uh, move to contact, and in this we have direction is just the word direction, maximum is 12, and again, solid objects. Alright, and the next thing below that is a V speed, and we just want to set the V speed to zero. Alright, so that's our basic collision with our OBJ underscore collision object. Now we want to move on to the movement slash collision again, kind of. Uh, this is where kind of all the magic is going on. So, first thing we have here is to go to the control tab, uh, you'll get the first uh, action that says check empty. In here, X is negative 4, and this is going to be your movement, uh, basically how fast you move and whatnot, just technically, I guess, how many pixels you're moving. Um, but if you change this to a higher or lower number, you're basically going to make you go either faster or slower. So if I change this to like 10, I'm going to go really fast, and if I change it to something like 1, I'm going to go pretty slow. So uh, one thing you want to make sure to do here is check relative. And, uh, yeah, because if you don't check that, you're going to get into some problem. You're going to run into some problem, excuse me. And uh, the thing below here is, uh, I guess I should show it in the move tab, uh, we have a jump to position action, and in here we have pretty much the same thing. X is negative 4, Y is just 0, and relative is checked. And then we have an else from the control tab, and then again um, we have a, another check empty right below that. And pretty much the same thing, x is negative 4, but this time y is negative 8. And this is all kind of corresponding with how the movement is going to work with the collision and overall give us that perfect uh, collision. So, uh, objects only solid, relative, again, we're going to check that. And click and drag over some starter blocks. And some of you guys might end, end a block too. Some of you guys might be wondering why I'm not doing this in code. And the reason for that is, like, normally I would, but... Some of these actions here are a bit annoying to incorporate in code, so I just thought I'd leave it in DND, and then if you guys want to go and convert it over, you can. Um, but anyway, moving on here, we have another uh, jump to position uh, action, and same thing here as in the previous uh, check empty object, or excuse me, action. 
uh, we have negative 4 for x and y is going to be negative 8. And again, if you really want to change that speed, uh, just make sure to go through all these and change it to negative 4 uh, to a higher number and or lower number. Relative, of course, we're going to check that. And in the Move tab, uh, click and drag over a moved contact. Put it right below the jump to position. And direction equals direction. Maximum again equals 12. And again, solid objects. So that took a little while to explain. Um, and don't worry, we don't have to go over completely uh, to the right. Because if you want to go ahead and just copy all this, which is what we're going to end up doing anyway, just go and left click, or excuse me, right click on here and go duplicate event and choose keyboard right. And since I already have it, it just automatically didn't really do anything. Now, the main thing we're going to want to do here is keep everything the same, just get rid of the negatives. Because since right's positive, uh, we're going to want to end up not going to the negative, but rather the positive numbers. So, yeah, pretty much the same thing there. And finally, for your jumping, uh, you don't really need to do this. This is my own kind of thing of jumping, I guess, uh, for this tutorial. But if you want it anyway, uh, pretty much all I did was I went to the control tab, and I gra or dragged over a check collision action. X equals 0, Y equals 1, and relative is checked, and of course object's only solid. And uh, vertical speed is just net to, or set to negative 5. If you want to jump a little higher, you can of course change this up to a higher number and or if you want to, or excuse me, if you want a lower number, just change it up to a lower number. I told you guys, can't talk today. I have no idea why, but <laughs> nonetheless, moving on. So I believe we already went over this. I can't remember. All right, anyway, uh, obj underscore collision, same thing as our spare collision. Uh, you just want to make sure you have this sprite for it and check it solid. And that's all you really need to do. And finally, um, oh, also, if you really want to make it or make it not show up, if you're like using tiles or something, like you could use this as a regular ground block uh, instead of just using it as a collision block and then putting tiles all over for the ground. But if you want to do it this way, so basically you have your collision, you can just kind of place it in certain areas here, and then you have like um, certain tiles that are going to act for your ground. You just kind of put them underneath those. And if you want to make uh, make it so it just shows the tiles, like if it just shows your ground. Uh, go over here to where it says OBJ Collision, or your OBJ Collision object, and uncheck Visible, and hit OK, and then run the game. And there we go. Everything is now, all the uh, collision blocks are now not visible, so you can just see the tiles themselves, and it kind of looks like it's just regular ground. And of course you have that nice, uh, nice, perfect, almost perfect, precise, ish collision going on and and stuff like that so it's pretty good collision pretty good movement and uh, overall it works really good for platform games and this in, in the in the like so yeah <laughs> anyway guys i'm gonna end this thing off i'm just really tired or something i don't know there's been a lot going on but uh excuse my speech in this video i apologize for that but um hopefully it'll be better in other videos and tutorials but Anyway, just going to go ahead and end this video off right here. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this helped you guys out. And um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Feel free to comment, rate, subscribe, uh, whatever you guys feel like. And till next video, till next tutorial, till next time, <laughs> this has been Rex Murray. I'll see you then.